Happy Monday, everyone, and I trust you had a great Thanksgiving. And in the spirit of that, I want to actually extend the topic of gratitude into this week. Uh, I don't believe it should just be a dinner. I, sh I believe it needs to be our DNA. I believe it needs to last all year long. In fact, at New Life Church, we talk about being contagious with joy, honor, and gratitude needs to get in our system, needs to change us. I've been practicing it for the best part of 30 years, taking the topic seriously. And I, I know this for me, the more I've learned about it, the more I've grown, the more I learn about it, the better it is and the better I become. It enriches every part of our lives. I want to share a couple of verses and then give you what I consider three of the best insights that have helped me regarding gratitude. And the verses are Psalm 100, verse 4, many of them like this one, but it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Old Testament scripture, lots of verses like that. Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. So even before the answer comes, with thanksgiving, before the circumstances change, with thanksgiving, we present our request to God. So here's the first insight that was really helpful to me. My circumstances do not need to change for my gratitude to go up. Because when you take just these two verses alone, they're based on the nature of God, not the nature of our circumstances. So I enter his courts with praise and thanksgiving for who he is, not about my circumstances. I come and petition him with my circumstances, but my focus is on who he is and his unlimited abilities, not my current challenges. And so I come with his character in mind. So I don't need my circumstances to improve for me to give God the glory he deserves, but also gratitude sets my attention on who he is, not just what I'm currently dealing with. But I also learned this, Gratitude needs to speak up because unexpressed gratitude can come across as ingratitude. Now, I know God can read our minds, but other people can't. So if I just think uh, good thoughts, that's better than thinking bad thoughts. If I think uh, grateful thoughts, that's certainly better than thinking about negative, bitter, critical thoughts. But people can't read our minds. So if we don't express gratitude when it comes to our relationships, people might actually just assume we're not thankful. We're not grateful for them. Unexpressed gratitude can actually be interpreted as ingratitude. So what do you need to say and whom do you need to say it to perhaps this week? Don't just share what you're thankful for around a Thanksgiving dinner. Let it be a part of your lifestyle all year long. And then there's a third principle and a passage I want to read to you. But the principle is this. Gratitude is not simply a response to good things. It can actually conquer bad things. Here's the story out of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. The short version is the people of God are in trouble. The short version is there's an army that outnumbers the Israeli army and they're in trouble. And yet this is what's recorded. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the vast army, for the battle is the Lord, Lord's, not yours. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance that God will give you. And then in verse 21, it tells us how that was played out. It says, Jehoshaphat, who was the king, appoints men to sing to the Lord and praise him for his splendor and holiness. As they went out at the head of the army, they sang... Gave, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Get that picture in your mind. The people without weapons, without shields, without swords, without any kind of defense mechanism um, are the ones leading the army. They're just leading with their singing. They're leading with their instruments. They're leading with their thanksgiving. Give thanks to the Lord. And then this is what happened, verse 22. As they begin to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Amnon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. Literally, God uses thanksgiving to defeat an enemy. Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. I believe that's a physical uh, battle with a spiritual principle. And as we do that, I believe that thanksgiving can defeat discouragement. It can 
defeat a critical spirit. It can defeat jealousy and envy and a whole host of other things. You just gotta, you just gotta get it out of your mouth, not just have it in your mind. I think it can overcome dissatisfaction. So I've learned this, life is never all problems, nor is it all blessing. Some point you just gotta decide what you're gonna focus on the most. So if you're married, if you just find the flaws of your spouse, I'm telling you, your dissatisfaction will go up. If you choose to focus on what to be grateful for, the strength of your marriage, the health of your relationships can go up. If all you do is see your kids doing something wrong, you focus on that, the frustration level will go up. But if you think about what you're grateful for, I'm telling you, health can come in. Uh, comparison can be driven out. A, a, a bitter spirit at times, maybe a broken heart, all can get mended in the context of a grateful spirit that gets its eyes off of the problems and up higher to where the Lord is. So toward that end, I want to first say thank you uh, to you. I want to express my gratitude to each one of you who joins with me and our team and you're leaning into God's word. That's commendable to do. I want to thank those of you who serve new life, who give to new life, who help us to continue to expand our ministry I don't want you to just uh, think that I'm grateful for. I want, to, I want you to know I'm grateful for you. I appreciate who, has, who have served, who have given, who have prayed, who have supported, who have encouraged. God uses you. And so I want to thank you, but I also want to, in advance, just begin to thank God for what he's up to in our futures together. So Jesus, thank you for my friends. I certainly know that some of them are in battles and some of them are in blessing, but Wherever we find ourselves right now, I pray that today would be a spirit of gratitude, that you're with us, that you're strong, that your hand is not short, your, your commitment to us is not weak. You've always been the one where the battle is the Lord's and we can trust you. So I pray that our gratitude would go up even today, regardless of our circumstances. All year long, we would grow in gratitude. We would see the rich victory that comes from it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.